Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Ontario Soil Network and the Mosaic Company. Bernard Tobin here on the Soil School. Today we're at the University of Guelph's Ridgetown campus to talk soil and cover crops with Guelph Sustainable Soil Management Professor Laura Van Erd. Laura, how's it going? It's going great. It's a beautiful fall day and uh, the cover crops are growing. Oh, they, are sure, they sure are. And you know what's also growing is that conversation about yeah. cover crops. And, and there seems to be an endless discussion about the benefits of cover crops. And I want to talk to you about some of your research and, and some of the economic analysis you've done on cover crops. There seems to be some obvious winners here. Yeah, and so I have to give credit where credit is due, and that's with Dr. Richard Vine. He's the economist here at Richtown Campus, University of Guelph, and I collaborated with him to do the economics from my long-term cover crop trial here at Richtown. So these cover crop trials were established in 2007, and we have a repeat in 2008. So we've had the cover crops in the same plot area for six times over eight years. And the way that we can get that large frequency of cover crops is because we're in a processing vegetable and grain system. And with that, uh, you asked about winners and losers. Um, well, if we think about vegetable production, and in my system, we've got two years of tomatoes and sweet corn and squash. And comparing that to a, the grains in that eight-year rotation, we have corn, soybean, and two years of wheat. So if we just think about, regardless of the cover crops, if you think about the economics of tomatoes versus wheat, I, I'm pretty sure we know the winners and the losers there. So Laura, talk about the numbers, some of your results. How do the wheat and the vegetables compare? Okay, so the numbers. So again, we, over the eight years, we were able to plant cover crops six times. And so uh, Dr. Richard Vine looked at the economics over that eight year period. And we saw that of the four cover crops we tested, there was 4%, 5%, and 9% increases in economics. So over the eight years, you're improving profit margins by five to 9%. That is huge. And it's largely due to the tomatoes and the rotation. Um, now, the, one of the advantages of having vegetable crops in the rotation is you've got a long growing season. Uh, behind me, this was planted after tomatoes, uh, but in the rotation we have peas and sweet corn, which are harvested earlier in the season. And with that early harvest, we have lots of a, a window to capture sunlight for cover crop growth. And that, I think, is the, the factor that's driving the economics, is because we can grow a cover crop in that vegetable system. We have enough time. And that's much different than a grain crop, right? Absolutely much different, right? The, the major window to put in a, a cover crop in a grain system is after winter wheat. It's a great time. There's lots of value in putting in winter wheat. Um, and one of that, the value of putting in winter wheat is, is putting in a cover crop. What about, um, I guess, the numbers on the grain side of your research? Um, Laura, how do they compare? Obviously, uh, we're going to talk about a lot more than the, than the economics because there is a lot more than the economics, but how do, how do they stack up? Yeah, if so, so our, let me just qualify by saying that our experiment wasn't designed to do direct comparison of vegetable systems versus grain systems. But what we did have was four years of vegetables, four years of grain. And so we, we decided to separate out and we did uh, Richard Vine did the profit margins. Uh, so you take the profits from selling the, your commodity and compare that to the cost of planting a cover crop. And in the grain system, yeah, you're, you're losing money. The profit margins are negative. So, and it's around 7%. Now, let's put some qualifiers to that. Number one, we got two years of winter wheat 
and one year of soybeans, one year of corn. The other thing in the, that goes into the economics is the control of the cover crop. So I don't know on uh, every farmer's, you know, budget sheet, but a spray in the spring is pretty common. Now, in our economics, we have to attribute a spray burn down of the cereal rye cover crop. Would a grower normally be doing a spray first thing in the spring to control weeds anyway? Likely. So that goes into the economics. So you have two years of wheat, you've got that spray burn down of the cover crop that fits into the economics. Those are the major drivers that's bringing down the profit margins. The other thing is we don't see a large yield response in our grain system as we do with tomatoes. Tomatoes are really responsive to management. Um, and so in that eight-year um, eight period, we had some dry years and tomatoes really respond. And with improvements in soil health, we're seeing response. So let's talk about that grain farming aspect again, uh, Laura. I want to talk about, you know, cover crops and, you know, growers are seeing notable increases in carbon, uh, you know, organic matter. There's significant soil health benefits here, you know, that, that really do contribute to higher yields. Talk about, you know, I guess the importance of that higher organic matter, you know, better water holding capacity, making soil more resilient. You got it. And we're observing it here. So where previously we would have thought, oh, it takes years to build soil organic matter. We've measured it after eight years. So with cover crops compared to without, and we've got two side-by-side -side trials here. One, you can see the cover crops after tomatoes and behind me is corn. Um, consistently higher organic matter. And we're talking 11% higher with cover crops than without. We measured soil health. 17% greater soil health with the cover crop than without. That, that's the numbers that we're seeing after eight years. So what does that mean? Well, the, just as you said, that means better holding, water holding capacity. And in the years where we get really dry August, that shows up in our yield. So that's the value of soil health.